The woman who won the reality show I Wanna Marry Harry calls Meghan Markle a nobody actress and thinks it's ironic that Prince Harry ended up with her because trolls always told her that he would never date a B-list star. Subscribe to my channel. Like, view, and share and do not miss to press the bell icon. This comes almost a decade after the show's critics told her that she had no chance with him because he would never date a nobody actress. I Wanna Marry Harry was a reality show on Fox that followed 12 American women who believed they were competing for a chance to date Prince Harry for one season in May 2014. Matthew Hicks, a person who looked like him, was the one in place. Kimberly Birch, a New York City-based aspiring actress who won the series, received a slew of mean remarks from viewers who claimed the royal would never actually be interested in her because she was neither British nor famous enough. In a new interview with Insider, nine years after appearing in I Wanna Marry Harry, she reflected on her victory, saying that she finally feels vindicated that he married an American B-list actress like Meghan. Subscribe to my channel. Like, view, and share and do not miss to press the bell icon. She elaborated, at the time, it was just something that seemed so far-fetched for people. Did you really think that Prince Harry would ever actually date some nobody actress in America? Was one of the many comments. Then. I recall hearing about Meghan Markle's backlash. She was just an actress from the B-list. She used to be a nobody, but she's now married to Prince Harry. It strikes me as so ironic. It was art imitating life. Matthew's striking resemblance to the Duke of Sussex convinced all of the contestants on the show, who were initially unaware that the suite they were competing against was Prince Harry. In addition, they were all housed in England's opulent Englefield house, which resembles a castle. There, they were constantly surrounded by guards and servants who only addressed Matthew as sir. The women were even made to believe that they were dating Prince Harry by the show, which even went so far as to stage paparazzi following them and security threats. The show was cancelled after just four episodes due to low ratings, but viewers continued to watch as the women went on extravagant dates with the man they believed to be the prince. On Fox's website, the rest had its premiere. Kimberly told Insider that, while she debated whether or not Matthew was Prince Harry during her time on the show, she insisted that she knew by the end that it wasn't really him. Kimberly admitted when asked if she still wanted to marry Harry that she didn't think Meghan would be able to handle everything she went through, especially after the backlash she received just for being on the show. Definitely not. Hell no, she replied. I owe a lot of credit to Meghan Markle. I wouldn't be able to handle being under that kind of microscope on my own. Being famous was something that seemed so appealing to me when I was younger, but now I feel the exact opposite. I don't want that much stress. She also lauded the father of two for leaving the outdated royal family and mirroring his mother, Princess Diana, who died in a car accident in 1997 when Harry was 12 years old. It's kind of like watching her come back to life. Kimberly said. Diana tried to break away from stereotypes and she was a free spirit. I think it's beautiful because he's really taking a risk and finding happiness. Kimberly spoke with Fusion TV after the show premiered in 2014 to talk about some of the ways the crew messed with the contestants such as intentionally letting them overhear fake conversations and allegedly hiring people to pretend to be therapists. She also criticized the crew for brainwashing the contestants into thinking it was the real Prince Harry. She remembered, outside your room, production personnel would stand. They would whisper 
You have to get him back to Buckingham Palace. Just when you thought they weren't aware you were awake. The royal family is devastated. The show is making them unhappy. They're trying to keep up with social media and the way things are in the world with this new thing they've never done before. They really manipulated us. They actually brought a therapist onto the set at one point to talk to a few of us who thought it wasn't him. Later, we discovered that it was not a genuine, licensed therapist. Only a member of the production team was responsible. You're so brainwashed into it that you follow everything in order to maintain your sanity. She claimed that the therapist would advise her to learn how to trust your mind. I'm aware that you are in a foreign country and are unaware of the situation, but you must have faith in the locals. You shouldn't keep asking questions. In 2018, Harry wed Meghan, and they said in 2020 that they would leave the monarchy and move full-time to the United States. Arky, who is three years old, and Lilibet, who is one, are the two children with whom they share a $14 million mansion in Montecito, California. In 2020, Kimberly and her fellow contestants Meg Pan Jones and Rose Bricklin, formerly Copeland, discussed their time on the ill-fated series once more with Refinery29. The women claimed that when they were whisked off to England, they were informed they were participating in a show called Dream Date and that they were unaware of much else. They said that when they got to Englefield House, there were a lot of tabloids with headlines about Prince Harry being ready to find his princess. Kimberly said that all felt very fake in hindsight. Matthew exited a helicopter in khakis and a blue button-down shirt that matched one of the real Prince Harry's outfits when it was finally time for the contestants to meet their mystery sweeter. Matthew stated that he would only agree to participate in the show if he did not have to completely lie to the women. He was told to act like himself and not a royal, but this did not stop other people from encouraging the women to speculate. Producers arranged for fans to approach him and pose for photos while he was being followed by fictitious paparazzi. In the final episode, Paul Leonard, who played Kingsley, the show's butler, revealed to the women that they were dating Prince Harry. Kimberly told Refinery29 that the moment she was informed of Prince Harry's identity, the logical part of my brain was telling me this does not look like Prince Harry. This is a completely absurd premise. In real life, this would never take place. Your other brain, on the other hand, is being completely brainwashed. You're secluded from your friends and family, you have no access to any media, and you are in this castle. Being told that if you are questioning whether this is Prince Harry or not, you are crazy. She added, however, that when she saw a picture of the real Prince Harry while on a date with the fake and realized it didn't look like the man she was dating, she knew she was being duped. She and Matthew split the prize, which was approximately $300,000, after she won and they parted ways after a few show-related meetings. Despite being dubbed America's most gullible women by time after, Kimberly and her fellow cast members had no animosity toward the show or its producers at the time. She stated, they're just doing their job, and they did a really good job. I felt like you were really out of your mind. Kimberly went on to earn her master's degree in drama therapy where she actually wrote her thesis on the show's use of brainwashing. Subscribe to my channel. Like, view, and share and do not miss to press the bell icon.